It's time to end Donny Kate's Venom storyline with this finale issue. This is the comic story in channel where I take some of your favorite trade paperbacks and single issues and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then I read them dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Today we're going to be covering Venom issue 200, and while I did title this The End or The Finale, it is only the finale of this particular writer's run. You see, in the world of comic books, they never truly end, they will always come back, but every writer's initial vision does come to its conclusion, and then it's up to the next writer if they want to continue it or start brand new. Donny Cates' run started all the way back at the introduction of Null, and Dylan, Venom's child. He did everything from absolute carnage into King in Black, and at the end of King in Black, Eddie Brock and Venom became the new King in Black, with the ability to grow wings and an entire symbiote race praising them. It is now with issue 200 that that particular run of Venom is coming to its conclusions, so let's get into Venom's finale. Eddie Brock has been fighting his entire life. With his father, with his wife, with his job, with Spider-Man. With darkness and broken glass inside of his own mind. But nothing, nothing comes close to the path that has led him here. He has fought dragons, blood-red leviathans reborn in the image of a dark god and him. Null. He's died. He's been reborn. He has seen the other side. He has seen mercy. He has known fear like never before. And he has learned how to love. To find peace in the eyes of his son. And now with the battlefield clear, with the king in black defeated, his fight begins again. He has died, been reborn. He has seen the other side. He has seen mercy. He has known fear like never before. He has learned how to love and to find peace in the eyes of his son. And now with the battlefield clear, with the king in black defeated, his fight begins again. When Eddie defeated Null, he gained Null's power. He became the hive mind of the symbiotes themselves, able to pilot the symbiotes across the galaxy. They speak through him, and he through them. It's overwhelming, and yet... Here he is in the heat of battle defending a peaceful alien race against a ravenous horde of conquerors on a nameless planet in the deepest corner of the universe. It is then that Eddie realizes that he will never be alone again because now they are everywhere. On the planet Fallow, they help the Valvrin priests rebuild their ancestral home and the fabric of the cosmos before it unleashes hell into the world. In Asgard, they met with Thor in the Parliament of the Gods. Thor thanks him for his part in the war with Null and they shake hands. But even as Eddie shakes Thor's hand, he's not really there. No, for the first time in his life, Eddie is home and here, he is not a god. The apartment was a gift from Tony Stark. His way of saying thanks for, well, saving the world. The spire was moved here, which allows him more direct access to the symbiote hive. And it allows him to stay close to his son, Dylan, even when he is a galaxy away. These past few months have been incredible for him, but like everything in life, they've not been without consequence. Dylan comes in stating that he needs to get ready for school. Come on! So Eddie coughs as he makes a cane for himself to stand up on. Because becoming the hive mind for a billion life forms around the galaxy was easy for a being like Null. For Eddie, he's just a man. A man who has rapidly aged because of his connection to the hive. As Dylan goes and gets ready, Venom begins to change into his dog form, and Eddie thinks of all the symbiotes in the galaxy. His other is the only one he can't control, cannot see through. Freed from the hive when Eddie rescued him from Null's clutches, and as a result, in some ways, made them the most powerful symbiote in the galaxy. Dylan comes running down the stairs, telling Eddie that he's ready. He also might be late because of science club, but Eddie tells him, Detention. You have detention. Dylan yells back, what the heck? And Eddie stops him. Is it because of fighting again? You can't keep this up. Why didn't you say anything? Dylan looks away. He tried. He came into the room or whatever, but his eyes were rolled back and he was spaced out. Eddie sighs. I'm sorry. I'm always here for you, Dylan, no matter. But before he could finish, the symbiote cat, the sleeper, yells at Eddie. Hey, Spider-Man called like 10 times. He might be late for your little team up thing. Eddie asks, what? When? Why not just call me up and tell me? And Sleeper tells him, well, I don't work here. And he smacks the cell phone off the ledge onto the floor. Dylan takes Venom's chain, telling him, well, I'm going to be late if I don't go, okay? Bye. 
Eddie tries to tell him to wait, but once Dylan is out the door, it slams shut, and Eddie then sighs going back to the spire. But Sleeper yells that Spider-Man called again, and Eddie shouts, I know! Outside, Dylan and Venom walk, but after an awkward moment of silence, Dylan asks, so I wanted to ask, what do I call you? Venom turns back to him, what? Dylan again asks, well, like, you and my dad, together you're Venom, but what is your name? I understand. No one has ever asked me that before. I don't quite honestly know how to answer it, Dylan. My kind, we don't have names, not like humans. Each of us communicates with a host through a certain emotional vibration. This emotional pattern is how we distinguish ourselves and the collective hive. It wouldn't be pronounceable by human vocal cords. And mine is, well, somewhat unique. When Null still controlled the Hive, my pattern was cast out of the Hive for going against Null's control. From there I wandered alone in the galaxy until I found, well, that's a long story. I'll let Eddie tell you that one. Dylan asks, can I hear it? Your, your name, your emotional pattern, is it possible? Of course, hold tightly. Venom stands still for a moment and Dylan can feel the chain vibrate and then a single tear rolls down his face. That was... Thank you, I needed that. And Venom tells him, You are very welcome. Meanwhile, across town, Eddie sits down with Spider-Man for lunch, and after taking a bite of his sandwich, Spider-Man says, So, you're omnipotent now, right? Like, you're a god thing? Which is still a little... Eddie stops him. Omnipresent. Omnipotent means I know everything. I don't. Omnipresent means that I exist in all points at the same time. A bit of exaggeration, but it's a more suitable term. Spider-Man takes another bite of his sandwich. Right. Are you okay, Eddie? <laughs> I'm doing good, but surely this isn't just us going out to lunch. What's going on, Peter? Spider-Man takes a deep breath. I can't help but feel responsible for everything. No, the invasion, the war, God. Who knows how many planets and the civilizations that Null killed just to get here. And now you and Dylan, it's all my fault. All because I brought the first symbiote back to Earth. Because I wasn't strong enough. Eddie takes one of his fries. Look, the symbiotes have been on Earth for over a thousand years. They fought in Vietnam. They were a part of the Weapon Plus program. Hell, the legend of Beowulf and Grendel is based on them. Spider-Man pauses and clears his throat. <laughs> How long did you know that? Eddie tells him. About the time that the dragon showed up. Spider-Man lets out a sigh. Oh, well, that's a relief. But still, I could have... Uh, Eddie? Eddie sits there with his eyes glowing, clearly not currently there, and Spider-Man tells him, Oh, you're, you're doing the whole God thing, aren't you? That's rude. I guess you won't mind if... As Spider-Man reaches for one of Eddie's fries, Eddie smacks his hand away. Ah, fine, fine. I was watching my carbs anyway. After a few moments, Eddie returns, telling him, Ah, oh, sorry about that. I also had a meeting with the Avengers right now. Spider-Man yells, Wait, hang on. You were here and also there? Wait, are you not really Eddie? Well, I am and I'm not. Also, we're about to be robbed. Spider-Man stops and asks, what is he? But then the door to the diner is kicked in and a masked man with a shotgun storms in. The gunman stops when he sees Spider-Man waving at him. Spider-Man begins to get up and Eddie tells him, it's okay. We've got this. And he throws his cane right into the gunman's chest. As the cane hits, it splatters into symbiote goo, pinning the man to the wall. Eddie sits back down and smiles. Don't worry, I've already alerted the police. Care to pay the tab? I really don't have any money. Spider-Man says that he doesn't even have pockets in the costume. And once the two of them walk away, Eddie tells him that he's sorry. He should have said something about being piloted. Spider-Man laughs. <laughs> You're really like a god now, huh? Not really sure what to make of that, really. But if you need help with anything, Eddie holds out his hand. I'm still me, and I will probably need help. Maybe not like in the past, but as my friend. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to get back home. Dylan should be getting out of school soon. As the symbiote begins to turn back into goop, dozens of winged symbiotes fly out and off into the sky as Eddie yells, Thanks for lunch! Spider-Man watches and says, Okay, that one was pretty cool. But it was true that Eddie's mind was elsewhere because he was busy with all of the other superhero groups around the world telling them that during Null's invasion, there was something that he caught a glimpse of. Something that they should all worry about. In every dark corner of the galaxy that he has sent his mind's eye to, there is still one being that has escaped him, one that he can't seem to find anymore. The Maker, the evil Reed Richards from another universe driven insane, and he brought a symbiote from his world and it was damaged. They used him and his other to heal it. Maker believed correctly that his kind would allow him to travel between dimensions without further damage to his psyche. He augmented his symbiote with biochemical upgrades and he was unstoppable. He disappeared through a dimensional rift before he could be caught, 
back to what he called the ultimate universe, which is why he's come to all of them. It is possible that the Maker is going to come back. It is believed that he has been in contact with a group that is calling itself the Council of Reeds. They also believe that this Council of Reeds is a series of interdimensional duplicates of himself, issuing a sort of challenge in order to join their ranks. If he's to become one of this Council of Reeds, he must restore his own failed universe. That is why it's possible that the Maker may be looking to replace their universe with his. Tony gets up. Wait, 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 wait. This is a lot to take in. And I'm not saying I don't believe it, but where is your information coming from? Eddie stops him. I can see things that you cannot. Ah, uh, one moment. Tony looks at Eddie as Eddie pilots another, waving his hand, asking anyone there. Eddie returns shortly after, telling him, Sorry, that was rude of me. What were you asking? As Tony scoffs and walks off, Eddie gets up and Cap tells him that they appreciate him bringing this up. They'll be looking into it. The offer also stands. He's welcome to fight alongside the Avengers anytime. Eddie laughs. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm just going to be a stay-at-home dad these days. But I appreciate it more than you know. But if you're looking for someone to fill your ranks, there is one other. Cap asks who, and Eddie smiles. You guys already know him. Elsewhere, Flash Thompson walks the streets of New York among the crowd, keeping his hood up and head down. He's been everything, a soldier, a busted up veteran, a symbiote host, a dead man, and lately, it's been a mix of all of that. Not sure why he came back to the city, he can't put his mother through this, knowing the son that she buried is walking again. And right now, the safest place for his mother is to be somewhere that he can't. Flash ducks into a coffee shop when the cashier asks what he can get him. Flash Thompson tells him that he'll just take a coffee. Whatever the little one is for you. The customer behind him chuckles, stating that she likes that. Did you know the other places have different names and even a whole new menu? Isn't that crazy? As the woman rattles on, the cashier's head explodes as a bullet shoots by, covering everything in blood. Flash pushes the woman to the ground, telling everyone to get down, and then immediately begins to pull the suit out, telling him, I shouldn't have come here. An old enemy has found me, and now that poor kid is dead because of me. A voice yells for everyone to remain calm. The guardsmen are here! Everyone stay on the ground until we've confirmed our kill! As the guardsmen make their way in, Flash asks, Confirm? You blew up the innocent kid's head! One of the guardsmen turned, telling Flash that this has nothing to do with him. Another checks the body, telling him that there's no movement. They might have actually gotten him. But then a white spike shoots out, slamming the guardsmen into the wall. The first guardsman asks what the hell was that, and Flash gets up as Agent Anti-Venom telling him, I'm the one you should have killed! The guns begin to go off as Flash quickly begins to take them down asking, Really? You guys want to go this route? Why are you trying to kill me? Kill you? We don't even know who you are! Flash throws him into the wall, telling him that it doesn't matter, and another yells, We are the guardsmen! We are sanctioned to take out any symbiotes or unauthorized aliens that we track down! And you aren't on the list! Shall we know the suit you're wearing, but Flash Thompson's in the ground. Flash slams the next guy into the ground asking, If I wasn't on your hit, then what are you doing here? The man coughs, asking, What are you saying? We hit our target! That kid is a freaking alien! Just like you. Another guardsman picks up the kid, having already regrown his head, stating that they need to get off his partner and back away. This is an incinerary round. Won't be able to laugh this one off. Flash asks, Wait, the kid is a symbiote? And the guardsman tells him, They're everywhere, you idiot! Since the invasion, as far as we know, they're all around us! The kid looks back, Please, I haven't hurt anyone! I had a terminal illness before my other came! I'd be dead in a month without it! The guardsman's laugh, pressing the gun against the symbiote's head. Oh, you don't need to worry about that. But before the trigger could be pulled, Flash screams, No! Throwing his arm out, crushing the guardsman's head against the wall, letting the symbiote escape. He slowly changes back to his human form, looking back, asking, All right, is everyone okay? But he can see it. They're terrified. Nothing is okay. Not for them, and definitely not for the kid that just ran out of here. The only thing that these people see is a symbiote. Flash pulls down his hood, steps back onto the street, and he quickly walks off. He doesn't know what any of this means right now, but he has a feeling he's going to find out soon. But later, over at Midtown High, Dylan walks through the school halls, thinking that just a few months ago, he was fighting dragons in the Lord of the Abyss alongside Captain America and his dad. Screaming, fighting, covered in snow, blood, and ash, and he's gonna miss it. At least then he fit in. He felt important, like he mattered, like he was strong. Just then, Dylan is forcibly pushed to the ground as someone yells, Sorry, Brock! Kenny McFarland Jr. Everyone calls him King Kong, a name that he stole from his old man. Everyone except Dylan. 
Kenny asks how many times does he have to say it? This hallway is for seniors only, no babies. Dylan tells him, oh, you would know, huh? How many years have you been a senior now? Must be a record. Kenny grabs Dylan asking, what is with you? You just want to die, huh? No one talks to the Kong like that. Dylan looks back at him. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm just not afraid of you. Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe you're the one who's afraid of me. Before Kenny has a chance to respond, he headbutts him to break free and then delivers a rib-cracking punch. Kenny screams with the blood filling in his mouth, slamming Dylan against the lockers, but Dylan kicks him off. He then lunges in, sending the two of them through the window out into the courtyard. He can feel himself losing it, and with every punch, he's bringing Kenny closer and closer to death. Dylan grabs one of the shards of glass, raising it above his head, and as he blinks, he realizes that none of this happened. He's still being held up by Kenny. Kenny asks, where did you go? I was talking to you. Dylan doesn't say anything, and Kenny pulls back, punching him in the face. Later inside of Principal Bean's office, Bean looks through Dylan's record, asking how long has he been enrolled here? Two months? And already this is the fifth, maybe sixth fight? What's going on, Dylan? Dylan yells that he didn't even start it. Why is he always the one getting blamed? Bean tells him that he wasn't stating that he started it. He just, well, this all has him a bit concerned. It's his job to ask this kind of stuff. How are things back at home, Dylan? Dylan stares off. Great. And Bean continues. Well, okay. And I have to ask, why can't you seem to stay out of trouble? Why can't you seem to stop fighting? Dylan looks away. I've been fighting my whole life. Later, after school, Dylan walks through the city with Venom, telling him that he should just go home. He's been walking for hours, and he is still so angry. At this point, he doesn't even know at who or why. His mother for just giving him away, his grandfather for hurting him, maybe his dad because he took away the only thing that made Dylan feel special. He has no idea who he is or where he's going. And at that moment, Venom pulls on the chain, telling him, Something's wrong. Dylan tries to ask what's going on, and a woman screams from an alleyway, telling whoever to stop. Venom begins to pull Dylan away, telling him that they should go home and tell Eddie. But Dylan pulls on the chains, telling him, No, my dad always had something to say about innocence. Up ahead, Jack-O-Lantern is mugging a woman, telling her to just shut up and hand over the money. I don't want to, well... But Dylan yells for him to stop, and Jack looks back, Oh, oh no, I didn't. With Jack's attention turned, the woman punches him and begins to run off, telling Dylan thanks. Jack takes off his helmet, pulling out a gun, asking, Does the big bad hero want to mess with the jack-o'-lantern? Venom begins to growl, telling Dylan to get behind him, but Jack then asks, What the hell is that thing? As the bullets pass through the saw, Venom grows to the size of the alleyway, lunging forward, and in a desperate attempt to stop him, Jack shoots. But the bullets pass through the soft skin of Venom, hitting Dylan right in the chest. Venom quickly rushes to Dylan's side, telling him to hang on. They can help. And as Venom wraps himself around Dylan, Jack says, wait, no, it can't be. You're, you're, you're Brock's kid? A voice tells him no as a giant foot slams onto the ground. And then the voice then says that they don't know who they are. But I will in time. You all will. Allow me to introduce ourselves. We are Venom! As Dylan charges at Jack, Jack begs for him to wait, please. And a giant fist comes crashing down with a large thunk. Later, Eddie waits atop his apartment building as Dylan jumps up and he says, well, that didn't take long. Dylan steps out of the suit. I'm sorry. There was a woman in trouble and I got hurt. The symbiote saved me. Eddie tells him, relax, it's okay. And Dylan asks, wait, you're not mad? Did you really think I didn't know this was going to happen? It doesn't take a god to see this one coming. I should have been there for you through all the anger and rage. How now you wander aimlessly without powers, and all I ever wanted for you was to be happy and safe. But there's no safer place in the galaxy than with that symbiote. Eddie stands back up telling Venom thanks, and to take good care of him, and Venom tells him, Of course, we are family. Dylan pauses for a moment. Wait, I heard that, both of you in my head. Eddie laughs. laughs. Yeah, it's going to take some time getting used to that. Dylan tells him that he thinks he can, like, sense things that he couldn't before, and Eddie tells him, yeah. You can sneak up on Spider-Man now. That's always been a fun trick. Dylan then tells him that he isn't sure he can handle this, and Eddie puts his hand on his son's shoulder, telling him, When I first wore that symbiote, I had so much darkness and hatred inside of me. But eventually it taught me that I could be a better man, and that I could do so much more. Now you don't have that darkness, and you need to never let the world beat you down, no matter what. And now, you're going to have something that I never had. Dylan asks, what's that? And Eddie tells him, me, us, and we're stronger when we're together. Eddie walks over telling him that he needs to get a better look at the suit, 
As Dylan gets back inside, Eddie says that it's big. And Dylan says that he wanted it to look scary. Eddie looks down at his wrist asking, and what about the chains? Are you sure about the chains? Dylan says that he's not so sure yet, figured webs are played out. He then looks around asking, is it okay if I uh, use your, your name? I know that, no son, you aren't Venom and neither am I. We are Venom, together. Now there's an explosion in the warehouse district, sightings of a goblin. You ready? Dylan looks at him, I'm as ready as I'll ever be. And as he jumps off, Eddie says, okay then Venom, let's get to work. And that is the end of Donny Kate's run with Venom. There's no more after this. And while the storyline of Venom isn't technically over, a brand new artist and writer is getting on this project, which means that this is the end of Venom as we know him. A different version is going to be created in the next follow-up storylines. Think of it this way. Incredible Hulk is completely different from Immortal Hulk. They're both technically Hulk, but both written by different writers. That's what's happening over here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this entire Venom run. And trust me, the moment the new one starts up, we'll be right here telling you how it begins. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. Don't forget to check out the full story of Venom and the King in Black. I'll give you a link to each of the core storylines down below before we do the entire Donny Cates Venom run in one massive video. Because that's going to be huge. Overall, guys, though, thank you so much. Don't forget to check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash comic story. And if you want to support us even further and you want to have a vote on videos coming to the channel. And uh, outside of that, just thank you guys for sticking around. I'll see you next time right here at Comic Story.